Hello everyone, I'm Aiden and you are watching a bonus video for the Kickstarter campaign for Scapula, the greatest freak show of all. If you're watching this video, chances are you've already backed the campaign. If you haven't, please, please, please join us for the fun. Follow the link down below and welcome to the show. So this is a little something extra I'm doing just for all of you wonderful folks who have backed this campaign or have been following the Scapula series. I've been creating comics for a very long time, the Scapula series in particular, for 15 years because it was better than working at Burger King. And today I'm going to show you my comic creating process. Now a lot of this process I've written about before in Scapula World's Worst Villain, and even though a lot of technical details have changed, the basic process remains the same. When I get an idea for a story, I'll jot it down in a Word document, and these little plot outlines will usually be a couple of sentences long. If I think the idea is worth pursuing, I'll write up a larger treatment, which will be about a page or so, or maybe even just a couple of paragraphs. Once I've gotten the story working to where I like it, it's time to start plotting it out with thumbnails. I am used to plotting things out visually, just from my career as a storyboard artist, so instead of writing scripts, which is what you would do with a conventional comic book, I prefer to use an old technique called the Marvel Method. Now those of you who know your comics history will know that the Marvel Method was a creative process where the story would be plotted out visually, where you'd have an artist like Steve Ditko who would draw it out in pencils first, and then the dialogue would be written in later by Stan Lee. This is the method that I've found is the most productive for myself to make Scapula comics, and it's pretty much what we're going to be seeing here. These are very, very loose pencils. Sometimes I'll go a little more in depth and refine things a little bit, but this is just a quick sample. And of course, we're only doing two panels today because a full comics page takes quite a, quite a while for me to do. This video would be like 10 hours long otherwise. So let's just jump right into inking, and typically with inking, I guess I'll just choose whatever is the dominant character in the panel, or whatever the primary focus is. For this first panel, it's our fishy friend, Kamongo. Um, a lot of my inking I mostly learned by studying, uh, you know, the great masters. In particular, I think one of my favorite, um, and most inspirational comic artists to me was Wally Wood. Um, when I those of you who have been around for a long time remember that the webcomic had a very different look, and when I took a break in between the webcomic ending and refining the series for Scapula and the Sinister Monster Doom Legion, I spent about a year just studying the original Mad Artists, in particular Wally Wood. You can see I'm making a lot of mistakes here, and you know what? I'm not editing those out of the video because there's a lot of mistakes made in the creative process, and now you all get to see them. You get to see how much I mess up. Babrus is further in the background, so I'm using a, a thinner ink line on him, just so he doesn't seem like he's standing right next to Kamongo in the foreground. We're going to be doing some more tricks later on to push a sense of space and so you know where characters are standing in relation to each other. Here's Tychodactyl, and unfortunately you're seeing an issue with going too light with your pencils is sometimes you really don't know what you're doing, so I'm just getting really sketchy in here. You can see I had to completely redo one of the arms just because I didn't lay the groundwork in enough, and yeah, that's that's fooey on me. And here's some background inks, and if you thought the background characters in the first panel were loose, these ones are going to be extremely loose. And now we have our very basic uh, background colors laid in. If you look very closely, you can see in that first panel what I did was changing the inks. What I found mixes in better what the color is when you slightly color your ink. So for the very foreground characters, you can see Kamongo in the first panel is a little bit more of a dark brown ink because that's a bright orange background there. And if you look very closely at Scapula, you can see he's got a sort of a dark blue ink. And in the first panel too, the background characters are lighter brown, which pushes them further in. These are just the color flats. It's a long and kind of boring process, so I've sped up this part of the video a little bit more because otherwise it's just me playing around like a coloring book. Tigodactyl, you'll notice, is not quite as saturated in color as Kamongo in the foreground. Again, that's just a trick to push them further back. In fact, Tigodactyl's colors are intentionally a bit dull just so we push them further back. Atmospheric perspective is very important for me, and it help, again, it helps push characters in space. You can see I'm doing a little bit more shading in the background because they're blurring in just a little too much. There's a lot of balance that goes on with coloring and tone. 
Babarus has got those EC mouth drippings going on. I love old horror comics. And you can see there's a little bit more uh, color fudging with the ink lines there. Again, just pushing characters further back. A little bit of light, a little bit of blur going on, just so we know that the background characters are standing much further away from Scapula himself. Okay, now it's time for shading. Using the same ink color for the shading so everything kind of blends in a little bit better together. I stopped using very heavy inks when I realized that it kind of contradicts with the shading or again it's just about balancing it's all up to you whatever you like to use it's the eyedropper tool to grab some of the local colors this is called an atmosphere level and what i was talking about atmospheric perspective is saying how light affects subjects is very very important because not only does it show you what objects are closer than others but it also shows you that the light in the scene affects everything involved and it makes it look more like the characters are part of the scene. So I'll copy the color layer, lock it down, take the eyedropper tool, grab a little bit of color or tone from the background, and then just setting the that layer to multiply at like very low opacity, like 10%. Jumping ahead to highlights here, you can see I use a two color highlight effect, which I've taken from a lot of old uh, horror artists like Basil Gogos and James Bama, where there's a stronger light hitting the subject on one side and then sort of a dimmer light of a different hue or color hitting it on the other side. You can see more of that in my monster drawing videos. This is a very simple pencil texture layer, which I love texture and I think it really is something that I'd like to see more of in comics. And this is our result. And there you have it. I hope you've learned something from this video. I hope it's gotten you excited about what's coming up next. And thank you so very much for being part of the campaign. Let's give a special round of applause to these early bird backers who jumped right in in our first week. It's always kind of rough seeing if these things are going to succeed or not, but you had enough faith to join us in right away. And for that, I am extremely grateful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And please feel free to share this campaign, spread this video around. If you got dirty pictures of me, share them. They're probably interesting. And join us tomorrow for another new comic page and for more surprises of what's coming up in store. Thank you so very much, guys. Welcome to the Freak Show. I'm <laughs>